Hey everybody, I'm Ethan, and today we're checking out the Swift Zip electric bike, next on Knowledge Review. Okay, so today we're checking out the Swift Zip. It's this cool little scrambler bike. I really like the design. It's very compact. It's got a short wheelbase. Also has small tires. These are 20 by four inch. Pretty small in terms of bike tires when it comes to fat tire bikes. Interestingly, this has a steel frame instead of the typical aluminum frames that we see on most bikes. This has a claimed range of 37 miles that's using pedal assist and then a claimed range of 22 miles using only the throttle. I'm actually glad that they state the two ranges separately because it proves that they actually did a, at least a little bit of thinking in terms of what you're gonna get by doing different things riding this bike. It has a 500 watt hub motor on the rear wheel. It can be controlled by a twist throttle on the right handlebar or by five levels of cadence sensing pedal assist. We'll get into how all those behave when we're riding it, but just wanna point out that it has these features. So you can control the level of pedal assist on this screen here. It's just a basic, very, very basic backlit screen. It actually is really easy to see in bright light. So you got your speed, pedal assist level. You can also switch between your odometer and your trip distance and the voltage and the time riding. Okay, yeah, so it's got a couple options, battery level as well. Nice little display, super simple, easy to use. Six speed Shimano tourney shifter, got mechanical disc brakes front and rear, also has a headlight in the front here and a tail light in the back, has a maximum rider weight of 265 pounds, so should be able to accommodate a pretty wide variety of riders. And I don't wanna to get too into all the nitty gritty details, so I'm gonna put up a screenshot of all the detailed specs. If you're interested, you can pause the video and check that out. Also has a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery that you remove just by turning it here and pulling it right off. So super simple, really easy to do. Slides right back on, lock it, done. But enough talking about it, let's see how it rides. So something interesting to note is that the throttle doesn't work until you first started pedaling with the pedal assist, and then after that, you can use the throttle. So I really like the rider positioning, actually. It's really, really comfortable. Like I said, this is a small bike. It's got a pretty short wheelbase, and so it, you feel really compact. Like, it's, it's just a nice, compact-feeling bike. Handles pretty well. It is a little bit uh, twitchy just because the wheelbase is so short, but, I mean, not bad. So like I said, you have to be moving first before the uh, throttle can be used. Kind of annoying. Also, the freewheel is really loud. I don't know if you can hear it, but like when you're not pedaling and you're just letting the wheel spin, the freewheel is super loud. Much, much louder than on most bikes I've ridden. Not the end of the world, which is kind of annoying. The motor itself is also kind of loud, not gonna lie. It's a bit of a noisy bike. We'll go down here. We'll test the brakes at the bottom of the hill. 20 miles an hour. Full brakes, ready, go. Actually stops really well. So going up the hill right now. You can probably hear the motor's pretty loud. It's accelerating up this hill. This is the steepest part too, 15. All right, it's kind of holding out at 15, so not bad. Getting 75% of your top speed while going up a steep hill. All right, so we'll test the acceleration, and for this, I'm not gonna go from a dead stop because you have to be moving first for the throttle to kick in. So I'll get it going a little bit, then slow back down. You can't just be moving for the throttle to kick in. The pedal assist has to kick in first, and then it'll allow the throttle. Okay, so pedal, just, pedal assist just kicked in. All right, I'll go from four miles an hour. All right, that's not too bad. Not bad. Let's see how this thing does going down a very, very steep trail here. Trusting the brakes a lot. All right, so the front suspension is fine. Not great, it doesn't really have a ton of travel to be honest, but the tires are doing a surprisingly good job at absorbing the bumps considering how small the tires are. I say small, I mean, they're still fat tires, but they're just smaller than a lot of the fat tires on bikes that we have. All right, well, we are no longer going on this trail because a tree fell and it's blocked off. So we're gonna turn around and see how it does going back up that steep hill, I guess. Okay, here we go. 
This bike is really struggling to make it up this hill. I am full throttle right now, slowing down a lot. I'm gonna have to pedal to make it up this. Ugh. All right, so I'm doing most of the work right now. And this is the steepest part right here. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, yeah, so I was definitely doing most of the work. It is a 500 watt motor, so I get that it's not meant to be super powerful, but it definitely it doesn't have a ton of torque. It seems like it's geared more for speed than it is for torque. Let's see how the swift zip does. Zipping through the trails. Forgive me for that one. So because this bike is so small and the wheelbase is so short, the bike feels a lot twitchier when you're doing tight turns and stuff. And your weight when you're standing up on the pegs is a lot more forward than it is on most bikes. I'm really leaning forward over these handlebars while I'm standing up on the pegs. Obviously this isn't designed to be an off-road bike first and foremost, but as far as I'm concerned, if a bike has knobby tires and suspension, I'm gonna test it off-road because what's the point of having those things if you're not gonna actually take it off-road? So the gearing I'm noticing is really short on this bike. I'm in gear six riding on these trails and it feels like it should be gear three or four on a typical bike, which leads me to believe that this bike is designed to be ridden mostly with the throttle, which I, I totally understand. It has enough power to get up to speed relatively quickly on flat ground, but if you give it any kind of incline, it takes a bit. So I don't know the weight of this bike off the top of my head, but it doesn't feel exceptionally heavy maneuvering it through the trails. Throttle response is pretty good. It's got a bit of a delay, but I mean, so many bikes have little delays. I'm just nitpicky about stuff like that because I really, really like when a throttle is just super snappy and responds immediately. All right, so there's a pretty decent delay between when you start pedaling and when the pedal assist kicks in. It stops pretty quickly though after you stop pedaling. All right, so ready? Start pedaling. There's the assist. Not too bad. But when I stop pedaling, it stops almost instantly after, so that's good. I will say overall, this is a fun little bike to ride. I think it would benefit from a couple changes. I think it would benefit from a bigger motor. I think it would benefit from better front suspension. That might be it, honestly, considering they're keeping it relatively cheap, because the price of this bike is impressive. This is a $1,400 bike. So at that price, I would say you get a pretty good value for your money. The build quality overall isn't the highest I've seen, but it doesn't seem bad either. It doesn't seem like there's anything you should really be worried about. It just doesn't seem as impressive as some of the bikes I've tested. If you're just looking for a scrambler style bike to cruise around your neighborhood on, this is a fantastic option. This is a great little bike. If you are taller though, if you're a bigger person, you might want to think about a bigger bike though, because like I said, this is small. It is a small bike. Again, I just went for the throttle here and didn't get anything because you have to have the pedal assist going first. The front suspension, the more I'm riding it, it really isn't great. But again, if you're buying this bike, you're buying this bike because it's affordable, not because it's super high end. The seat is, actually quite good. I like this seat a lot. It's big. I think you can go two up with this seat, but I, I don't know that I would just because of the fact that this is such a small bike. It doesn't come with passenger pegs. Obviously you can just get those and add them on, but I don't know that I would go two up with this bike just because it is so small and, and the motor is not powerful enough for two people, I don't think, unless you're on perfectly flat ground. But if you got any hills, you better be ready to pedal. All right, so going over the tight little twisty trail here. Yeah, again, handling is weird because of the fact that this is such a narrow wheelbase. If you are gonna be riding around on this bike or on any bike of this kind, especially an electric bike that is powered and goes a lot faster than your typical bike, highly recommend wearing a brain bucket, especially one from our friends at Lumos Helmets. They've been partnering with us for a while. This is the Lumos Matrix which has this really cool screen on the back. You can see we've got it NLR flashing on the back here. This has MIPS. You can see this little plastic lining here. This is for added safety. This allows your head to twist inside the helmet to help reduce concussions and head injuries. 
Really, really cool helmets, also really safe. If you wanna check one out, head on over to lumoshelmet.co and use our code NOWYOUKNOWLUMOS to get a discount on your order. Big thanks to them as always for partnering with us. I honestly think my biggest complaint with this bike is the fact that the throttle doesn't work until the pedal assist has first kicked in. And on top of that, the fact that the pedal assist doesn't kick in from a dead stop until you've pedaled a bit, until you've got the bike moving. So you basically have to do all the work every time you get this bike moving up until the point where it's going like five miles an hour. And then at that point, the pedal assist will kick in. And then at that point, you can use the throttle. So just that little thing alone would be a big, 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 big help with this bike. Which again, like I've said, I don't really have many complaints about this bike considering the price point. It's a pretty solid option. But that one in particular is just annoying me. So overall, I think the Swift Zip is a really cool little electric bike. I'm a big fan of the Scrambler style. The seat is super comfortable. Rider position is great. It's got decent power in the motor. Again, it might struggle a little bit with some of the steeper hills, but that's why it has pedals. The front suspension, it works all right. It may not be the best, but again, this is a bike that costs 1,399 US dollars. For that price, I think you're getting a super fun little electric bike. Again, this is a smaller bike, shorter wheelbase. So if you're super tall, this may not be the best bike for you, but in general, I think most people are gonna be able to ride and enjoy this bike. All right, well, that wraps it up for this review of the Swift Zip. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this bike and if you would like one. Also, while you're there, hit the like button. It helps us out a lot. Also, subscribe if you're interested in reviews of electric bikes like this. We do lots of them. We also review electric scooters, electric skateboards, electric motorcycles coming up, and some electric cars. So if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, make sure to hit subscribe. We'll see you next time. Now let's review.